guys, today we're going to be making some word art using perspective. Perspective, for those of you that don't know, is basically making something look 3D on a flat piece of paper. Artists use perspective all the time to help them draw all sorts of things like rooms, and buildings. We're going to be using it to illustrate a word. You're going to need a few things for this. A piece of paper, a ruler, a pencil, and an eraser. My pencil doesn't have an eraser, so I have this backup guy. Something to color with. I like colored pencils for mine, but markers will work just fine. And a Sharpie is optional for outlining. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to start with with our drawing is our word. Now you can use your name, you can use any word, you could use someone else's name and make this as a gift. Any kind of letters will work. I like block letters for this because it makes it a little bit easier to connect it to our vanishing point, which I'll explain in a second. But bubble letters will work too. Any type of letter that your heart desires. I'm just going to do the word hello since I haven't seen any of you guys in a really long time. And I hope you're doing great. Once your letters are finished, you're going to add the next most important part of our drawing, the vanishing point. Now the vanishing point can go anywhere on your paper. It's just a dot. It can go at the bottom. It can go off to the side in the corner. What it is, is the point where our eyes stop being able to see. This is what makes perspective work. I'm going to put mine at the bottom. And then you're going to grab your ruler and we're going to connect all of our letters at the corners to our vanishing point dot. Using your ruler, line up each corner to your vanishing point and trace lightly. You want to trace lightly because if you make any mistakes, you want to be able to erase. If you leave out a corner, that's okay. You can always go back and add it back in. And if you accidentally overlap, that's okay too. That's what our eraser is for. So now I'm just connecting all of my corners to my vanishing point for each of my letters. And see where I just overlapped my E a little bit? I can go back and erase that out of my E. No problem. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit so you don't have to sit here and watch me forever. Now, letters that are right above your vanishing point can be a little tricky. The lines are gonna be much more straight down. If you need to fudge it a little bit, that's okay. Now comes the tricky part. With curves like this O, there's obviously no quarters to connect. So we're gonna line up those upper and outer edges by just putting the vanishing point on our ruler and then slowly sliding our ruler until it touches that curve and just use that as a corner. Et voila. Vanishing point, slide it up, boom. And then last but not least, my exciting exclamation point. Make sure that you are checking that your vanishing point and your corners are lined up. Otherwise, they aren't going to look quite right. They're going to be going off in a different direction. See how mine are down here? I'm just going to erase really quick and then make sure that they're lined up the proper way with that vanishing point touching the ruler so everything is going back towards the same point. So now I have all of my letters connected and now I'm going to erase any little mistakes or fix any errors. I noticed that I'm missing part of my E here so I'm going to add that in and then erase any little extra lines that I don't need. Once you're done correcting all of your mistakes, you can either leave your letters the way they are, or you can do what I'm about to do and add in edges. This will make them look more blocky and less like they're shooting out of you from outer space. To do this next step, we are going to cut off these little tails that we've created. Using your ruler, in between those lines that you've drawn, you're going to draw lines that are parallel to the sides of your letters. So in this one, it's going horizontal because the bottom of my H is going horizontal. On this one, it'll go vertical. This part can be kind of confusing. If something doesn't look right, just erase it, try it again. My side of my H is vertical, so I'm gonna make a vertical line. 
And then I can erase all the little extra tails. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes a lot easier to figure out which direction your line should go. For things like curves, you'll just make a curve that's parallel to the curve of your object. So like for this O, we'll just make another little O-shaped curve. And then I have my exclamation point. Fix little errors, erase any little tails. And now I have my three-dimensional blocky letters. Now I'm gonna start coloring my design in. Think about where the light is coming from. If it's coming from the front, your letters are gonna be lighter than the sides. If it's coming from the side, then the sides might be lighter than the front of the letters. When you're coloring, especially with colored pencils, it's important to use little small circular strokes. This will keep it nice and even and keep it from looking super scratchy or liney. You can see how I'm using those circular motions to keep my turquoise blue nice and smooth, nice and neat. I'm gonna add a lighter color to the side because I wanna make it look kind of like the light is hitting my letters from the side. So I'm using the seafoam green color for the edge of my H. And then I'm gonna use a darker turquoise and a darker blue underneath where the shadows would naturally fall. If you don't have a color you need, you can make it by layering colors one on top of the other in light layers. So I'm coloring this turquoise a little bit light, and then I'm gonna add another light layer of dark blue over top to sort of darken it up a little bit and make an in-between color for those two. I'm gonna add a little bit more turquoise on top just to smooth it out. And then I'm going to darken this shadow a little bit. And then I'm going to color the rest of my letters. This next step is optional. I'm gonna use a Sharpie to go around the edges of my letters just to make them stand out a lot more. You can also use a dark colored color pencil if you don't have a Sharpie or if you just don't like how harsh Sharpies look. So I'm gonna go around all of my outlines, make them nice and bold. Now I'm going to add some little extra shapes in the background just to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to draw some, I don't know, stars, maybe some hearts. You can add whatever kind of shapes you would like. If you don't want to add shapes in the background, you can just give it a basic color 
and that would look great too. Once my shapes are done, I'm going to get my ruler back out and I'm going to connect those shapes to my vanishing point that was down here at the bottom just to make them look consistent with my letters like they're shooting out at me. Now I'm going to start adding color to my shapes. When you're adding color to your shapes, if you want to make it look like they're kind of trailing off into the distance, you can loosen up the pressure on your pencil to get a lighter value of the color you're using and make it look almost like they're fading off into the distance or have like a little comet trail behind them. Or you can color them just like you did with your letters. If you want to give them those sharp edges, it's totally up to you. I'm going to go back in and erase any pencil marks that are showing just to make it look nice and neat. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my letters and add some Sharpie outlines. You don't have to do that part if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. You could also add a background color if you want, but I really like the bright white of this paper, so I'm going to leave it alone. Erase my little errors down here, make it nice and clean, double check. And there you have it. There is your 3D word. Hope you guys had fun, have a great day, and stay safe. Bye-bye.